Hello, everybody. It is Oscars prediction time here on Trevor Matson Talks Movies uh, as I am writing and recording this. We are on the eve of fall film festival season. Uh, Venice International Film Festival. Is it international? I'm not sure. But Venice, <laughs> it kicks off tomorrow um, in the middle of the night here, but tomorrow morning uh, at Venice, uh, where the festival is held, I believe, 8.30 um, Power of the Dog is going to be showing. I don't know. I know Power of the Dog is definitely showing tomorrow. Um, will this get put out tonight? Maybe. Depends on how much time I have. It might be put out tomorrow uh, when Venice is opening. But lots to look forward to. I mean, over the, the next week, we'll get reviews for films like The Power of the Dog, like Spencer. Um, Parallel Mothers, I believe, is going to be there. Uh, Dune. The Last Duel, Last Night in Soho. So many great films we'll be showing there. Uh, so very, very excited to get all of those reactions. But what I'm going to be doing today is uh, looking at best picture predictions. Uh, <laughs> lots of people did their best picture predictions way before I did. Um, and that's just because I wanted to wait. I wanted to get as much information as I could. Uh, and these aren't, of course, my final predictions. So there's still going to be plenty that we learned. There will be films that come out of TIFF and come out of Venice and tell you right, um, that can, can throw a wrench into the Oscar race. Um, but with the information we have now, with the trailers we have now, knowing what we do about these fall festivals, I, I have what I think is a pretty solid top 25. Um, before, before we get into that though, I do want to mention, uh, five films that would be on here, um, but I don't believe they will come out this year. They have unspecified release dates, uh, so they very well could come out this year and be major contenders. I just don't think, um, based on not having a trailer for them, uh, and based on how production is going, um, them not being at festivals, etc., uh, that these films will not come out this year. Uh, so those being, uh, being the Ricardos, Aaron Sorkin's new film. I, so this one could, this is the one that I think is most likely to come out this year because we saw a trial of the Chicago set of an, uh, Aaron Sorkin's last film skip festivals. It didn't show at any festivals. Um, neither did any Netflix film, um, last year. I still think that this is coming out in 2022, but we'll see. Uh, next goal wins, similar situation. Now, I think this is actually showing at BFI London uh, Film Festival. Um, I talked about that on uh, Oscar Buzz, if you want to go check that out, my Oscar show. <laughs> um, plug, plug, plug. Uh, it's rumored to be showing at BFI. Nothing is confirmed. Um, but again, I still don't think this comes out until 2022. Uh, this one, I think, is confirmed for 2022. Uh, Andrew Dominic's Blonde, starring Anna de Armas, um, which I think will be her first big awards play, which makes me very excited because I love Anna de Armas. Um, so again, I think that's 2022, though. I, I really, really do. Uh, big, big Oscar contender, though. It's a biopic on Marilyn Monroe. The, the Academy is going to eat that up. Um, the Northman, Robert Eggers' new film, uh, the director of such films as The Witch and The Lighthouse. Um, this is a medieval epic. Um, the cinematography is going to be gorgeous. I could see this picking up so many tech nominations that it could sneak into Best Picture, but I believe this is also confirmed for 2022. Uh, and then there's also Canterbury Glass that may or may not be the real title of the film, similar to uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's film known as Soggy Bottom, uh, which you will see uh, and hear about later in this video. Um, but Canterbury Glass, David O. Russell's new film, it's David O. Russell, so that means that it's going to be an Oscars consideration. I just don't think it's coming out this year. But with with that in mind, um, let's let's jump into this. So I, I've broken uh, the 25 films down into three categories. So I have my 10 best picture predictions, my 10 bubble films, films that I think could very easily change into a best picture contender. Uh, and then I have five films listed as other contenders, movies that I don't think are going to be nominated for best picture, but I think may have... Uh, may have a shot if things break 
the right way. Um, this is the loose ranking. I will be saying the number with the film, but I won't be putting up anything on screen like number 25 this, number 24 this, because I, I've more, I was more focused on separating these films into the groups. Um, and it's more of a vague ranking because it's really hard to rank two films that we just know very, very little about. But with all of that, um, number 25 in other contenders is Respect. Um, so this film, Jennifer Hudson as Aretha Franklin, she's getting nominated for Best Actress. It's happening. Is she winning? No, no, she's not winning, but she's absolutely getting nominated I think this probably also gets a makeup and hairstyling nomination. I could see that being where it's capped, being a Judy situation. But if some films start to fall, right? We start to see films that we thought were favorites, maybe not do as well as we thought. I could see the Academy latching onto this film. They love biopics. More specifically, they love music biopics. I could see this getting in. Do I think it's likely? No. No, not at all. Uh, I think this has a very, very slim chance, hence why it's at number 25. But if the right things fall in place, I think it has a shot. Uh, number 24, I have Cry Macho, Clint Eastwood's new film. Nobody's talking about this movie as far as Oscars. And I really think people should be talking about this. Clint Eastwood, I, I, he's directed, what, two Best Picture winners? And I think four nominees. Clint Eastwood makes Oscar-worthy films consistently, consistently. And this film seems like such an intimate just love letter to his style of film and a very personal film, which we know the Academy likes. We know that they like Clint Eastwood, him making a personal film. Again, I don't see this as a... as a best picture play necessarily unless it's just like absolutely amazing but i think this movie is going to be very very good and i do think that it has a very good shot to get into screenplay um i really really do uh i think Lynn eastwood has an outside shot to get into director i i think that people are really underestimating this movie's oscar chances um so i i have it on here for best picture because i if it gets director and it gets screenplay anything's possible Number 23, I have A Hero. I believe this film premiered at Cannes earlier this year. Um, might have also been at Sundance. A uh, new film from Oscar Ferrati, a, a great director. Um, and this movie, I would say, was the early front runner for Best International Feature. And people were talking about this potentially getting into picture. Potentially getting into director for Oscar Ferrati. Potentially getting into screenplay. I still think it has a good shot at screenplay. I, I think along with most people have calmed down on the, the thoughts of picture and director. I still think it has a chance. It's, it hasn't premiered to the general public yet. Uh, it's just had a festival screening. So we can't judge the film entirely, but it didn't blow people away, I think, in the way that uh, a, a lot of people were expecting it to. So I still have it up here because I still do think it has a shot and I think it still will probably get nominated for Best International Feature, but I don't even have it winning Best International Feature anymore. Uh, so I don't have it getting anywhere near uh, Best Picture as of now. Number 22, I have Parallel Mothers, uh, Pedro Almodovar's new film. Um, he, of course, directed Pain and Glory, directing Antonio Banderas to a Best Actor nomination as well as getting Best International Feature. I could see this movie doing the same thing uh, and him directing Penelope, Penelope, Penelope Cruz to a Best Actress nomination and also getting Best International Feature, likely not winning either, uh, but I could see it getting those two nominations. The big thing here is screenplay. If this movie can get into screenplay, I have faith in it for Best Picture. If it can't get into screenplay, then I don't think it has a chance at Best Picture. But after seeing the trailer, this movie seems really fun. It seems very quippy. It seems like a very quick screenplay, which the Academy likes. So it made me want to put it higher. I, I've placed it a bit higher on my screenplay predictions. I think that this movie has a shot. The combo of international feature, screenplay, Best Actress, if it can maybe pick up like an editing nom in there, this movie's set. 
and I think it has a good chance at best picture in that case. Number 21, I have Belfast from Kenneth Branagh, the last of this list of other contenders. Um, this, much like Cry Macho, is a personal film, and Kenneth Branagh is a really underrated director. Yes, he's done Artemis Fell. Yes, I don't think that Thor is the best thing in the world. <laughs> um, but he's done well with the Academy in the past with his Shakespeare adaptations. That's kind of what he's known for. Is this a Shakespeare adaptation? No, it's a very personal film. That's the, that's the comparison to Cry Macho. And I think that this is a film that Kenneth Branagh absolutely should make. He's He's done so much, I think he deserves to just make a personal passion project type film, uh, a story that he really wants to tell. Um, Judy Dench is in this, I believe, and I think that she is a, a big supporting actress player, uh, playing a grandmother. I mean, that's Academy Gold right there. Um, I This is, I believe, premiering at Venice. Um, if not, I know it's premiering somewhere in these fall festivals, so we'll know general consensus pretty soon on this film but as of now if this film is even i would say in like a, it's an eight out of ten i think that it has a solid best picture play uh because kenneth Brown is underrated and I, I this might also just be me wanting to see him get more recognition now into the bubble film so these movies are yeah they they have a pretty good chance of getting nominated. I could see them interchanging with any of my best picture predictions. So the number uh, 20 here is The Last Duel, the first of two films from Ridley Scott on this list. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Adam Driver, Jodie Comer. So this is a film that could go big or it could flop hard. Uh, this is at Venice. I believe this is also at TIFF. This is the type of film that could absolutely just blow people away, knock their socks off. I think that Jodie Comer will get nominated for this film. I don't know whether that is for Best Actress or Best Supporting Actress, but I think she's getting nominated for this movie. The question is the rest of it. Um, we got a trailer. It looks very stylistic. I think that this gets production design. It probably gets costumes as well. So we're we're seeing these tech nominations. We're seeing a, a actress or supporting actress from Jodie Comer. I think that this movie will need. Is it's going to need cinematography or editing because there's no way that this gets into director or screenplay with Ridley Scott also having House of Gucci. That just isn't going to happen. But if this movie can manage to get editing or cinematography. Pair that with uh, something like production design costumes plus potentially a best actress. I think that this movie is in business. Now, that's a lot of ifs because um, I think supporting actress for Jodie Comer makes this film weaker. I think Jodie Comer needs to get into best actress and this movie needs to get cinematography and editing. And I wasn't getting that from the trailer. This is also a stack. Those are two stacked fields this year. So it's going to be tricky, but this film does have a path. It, it has a path. And I think that I could get in. Uh, number 19, I have the worst person in the world. And this was a hit coming out of Cannes. Uh, the film comes from Joe Jim Trier. It's going to be distributed by Neon. I mean, they did Parasite. This is taking another foreign film. It has a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. People have been loving this film. They've been absolutely loving it. Um, this is going to be tricky. It's it's going to be tricky. It's a it's a international film. It's always going to be tricky for them to get in. Yes, we've been seeing plenty more get in in recent years. But it's still, it's still hard. It's still hard for a film like that to get in. Um, but we have, I'm going to butcher this name, R Renate Rain Rains? Rena Ren Renate Rains? I've completely butchered that. The lead actress in this. She's getting Best Actress hype. 
if she can pull off a nomination, I think that this movie's in my predictions for screenplay. It has a chance. It has a chance. Um, this movie is also a major contender for Best International Feature. I honestly think that its only competition is a film that I have a bit higher, uh, I think five spots higher on this list for Best Picture. It's going to be between those two films for Best Picture. Um, I think that A Hero is quite honestly out of the race. Yes, there's Detain. Um, I don't even know if Detain gets nominated. I mean, people love uh, Julie de Courneau. And it won the Palme d'Or. But don't forget, Celine Siama has a film this year, Petite Maman. I could see, even with all of the love for Detain and all of the love for, for Julie de Cornell, I could see it being, you know, the situation we had with Portrait of a Lady on Fire in uh, Les Mis, where they go against Celine Siama. Well, maybe now Celine Siama gets in, not the film that we wanted. We wanted Portrait of a Lady on Fire, but I could see them giving it to the Celine Siama film this year and ending up excluding Tatain. France does really weird stuff with their submissions. Um, I'll actually be talking more about my predictions uh, on what France will do uh, with their international feature uh, submission this year on Oscar Buzz, episode three, which will be dropping on Sunday. So you'll be able to check that out there. But with the worst person in the world, I, I do think it has a chance. Um, and I'm quite honestly just really excited to see this after all the buzz it's been getting. Uh, number 18, I have King Rick, uh, King Richard. So it's a Warner Brothers film. This is, I mean, it's a studio film. It's starring Will Smith. There's a lot of hope for Will Smith to get best actor for this. I have him at number three. I think that Benedict Cumberbatch uh, for Power of the Dog and Denzel Washington for Tragedy of Macbeth are a bit stronger right now. Now, there's been rumors that Tragedy of Macbeth is really bad. Do I believe them? No. I, I think that this movie is going to be incredible. It's Joel Cohen, it's Francis McDormand, it's Denzel Washington, it's A24, it's black and white. Literally nothing could go wrong. I'm going to eat my words like a couple months from now, I know. But as of now, literally nothing can go wrong. <laughs> um... The problem with King Richard is that as of now, I think that Will Smith is their, it, it's its only play. I, I really don't see this getting nominated anywhere else except screenplay, potentially. Like, I just, I don't see this movie getting tech nominations. I, I just, I really don't see this movie getting any kind of tech nominations unless it's maybe something like editing. So that's its path. Its path is Will Smith wins Best Actor, and it gets an Adapted Screenplay and Best Editing nomination. That's its way to get Best Picture. I mean, I would say the biggest if there is Will Smith winning Best Actor. There was so much hype for him at the start of the season, but after the trailer, people kind of cooled down, and they're leaning towards other lead actors. So if Will Smith can pull it off, and it's able to pick up a couple uh, other nominations, I think it's best chances are screenplay and editing, then I think this has a shot. I, I, I have this at 18 just because, I mean, Warner Brothers is going to be able to put a lot behind it if they think they have something. The problem that's potentially here, and this is why I think um, In the Heights, which you will see later on this list, but I think that In the Heights could potentially also be in some trouble. Warner Brothers... I could very reasonably see them seeing, oh, hey, people like Dune. Let's put all of our campaigning behind Dune and just forgetting about In the Heights and King Richard, which would be unfortunate, but that's totally something that could happen. Uh, number 17, I have Last Night in Soho. Edgar Wright's latest film. He's never gotten a Best Picture nomination before. There's a lot of goodwill towards him to get this Best Picture nomination. People want this for him. They want him to get Best Picture. This film is going to get editing, which is big. Editing and cinematography are big for Best Picture nominations. We already know that this movie is getting editing. It's going to happen. I think that this movie has a good shot at screenplay. There probably isn't any acting nominations anywhere in here, but I think that's okay. The big thing is if Edgar Wright can pull off a director nomination. Because if this thing gets editing, screenplay, and director, that's big. 
if it can pick up cinematography too and plus like maybe a sound nomination which i could see coming out of this but if it can get director screenplay editing and cinematography it is in for best picture i think that editing is really the only lock there though i think all four other things or sorry all three other things is probably on the bubble because i would say that it has a pretty good chance of getting in for sound if it can get in and it isn't completely unreasonable to say that it gets into director screenplay and cinematography i just think it's right on the bubble i don't feel comfortable saying that it will get nominated there with it being on the bubble though if it can get those four things i don't see how this movie does not get in for best picture uh number six 16 yes 16 i have the humans um it's steven yun it's based off of a critically acclaimed play i don't understand why people aren't talking about this movie more i was even tempted to put it higher than this and it's quite honestly just like the lack of buzz that's holding me off but like beanie feldstein's also in this richard jenkins uh jane hoodie who uh was in the stage play um, she is reprising her role, uh, which she won for this movie did, or sorry, this, uh, play did so well at the Tonys. It crushed at the Tonys. Um, this is something that I believe will be seeing first reactions from at Telluride. I'm pretty sure we're seeing first reactions at Telluride. Um, I could see this being the father of the year. I, I really could, uh, with Richard Jenkins and Jane Hootie Shell both winning in the supporting actor and supporting actress categories and then this getting uh adapted screenplay maybe even a win in adapted screenplay i think if this movie can put together because i i think that jenkins and jane hootie show are already nominated like that's already happening for supporting actor and supporting actress if this movie can put together a strong adapted screenplay and like a cinematography campaign this movie is in it's it's in i i really have a lot of faith in this movie uh, as if reactions from telluride are good and people are liking this watch out watch out because this this could very easily get into best picture at number 15 i have tick tick boom this looks like a powerhouse performance from andrew garfield um, I thought that he was, he, he had a shot at, uh, in Eyes of Tammy Faye, which isn't happening. I don't even have that on my best picture predictions. That's very clearly and obviously just makeup and hair and Jessica Chastain. Those are the only things it's getting. They aren't even trying to push for anything else. It's, they know that they're getting the best actress nomination for Jessica Chastain and a best makeup and hair styling. They're happy with that. That movie is not going to get into best picture. But... Andrew Garfield has another shot with Tick, Tick, Boom, and it's directed by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Every, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but almost everybody loves Lin-Manuel Miranda. He is on top of the world right now since Hamilton came out. He has been on top of the world. Anything he does, people tend to love. This is his directorial debut. The big thing with this film is it was rumored to have been turned away from New York Film Festival and is instead premiering at AFI Fest. I don't think that this is a terrible thing. I, like, I, I don't think this is the worst thing in the world for this movie. I think that it's perfectly okay that it's going to be skipping uh, New York um, and just premiering at AFI. Um, but I like I could see Andrew Garfield getting Best Actor for this. Not a win, but a nomination. I could see where a lot of this mo- these movies' uh, nominations coming from is original score, original song production design, costumes, makeup and hair, editing, like this could clean house in the technical stuff um, to the point where I think that as far as above the line, all it really needs is a Best Actor nomination. Um, But we'll have to see how the tech stuff goes. I have a lot of confidence in the tech stuff, but we'll have to see. Uh, Number 14 is my current pick for Best International Feature winner, The Hand of God from Paolo Sorrento. Um, this is something that we'll be getting reactions from in two days uh, coming out of Venice. Um, it's coming from Netflix. And I think that Netflix thinks that they have another Roma on their hands. Something 
that is guaranteed international feature um we'll probably get like a strong play at director for paolo sorriento and it has a good shot at best picture i again even with parasite winning roma getting nominated i still feel like there is like the academy i just i feel like they don't like to nominate international films for best picture they love to instead just give them director nominations. We've seen that. It's It happens all of the time. Like, I think that another round would have been very worthy of a Best Picture nomination last year. Instead, Thomas Winterberg got Best Director. I mean, we saw the same thing with Paweł Lewinowski. I, I think that's how you say his name, for Cold War uh, in 2018, uh, the Polish film. So, like, we see this all the time. I mean, Alfonso Cuaron got Best Director for Roma, uh, ended up Roma not not winning best picture so I think that Paolo Sorrento has is probably in for best director at this point I think that this movie is probably in for adapted screenplay or original screenplay sorry I think that this movie is probably winning best international feature um it's just a matter of will it drum up enough momentum uh like a Roma or a Parasite did can it get that momentum to get in for Best Picture? And does Netflix want to push it that hard? Because they have plenty of other contenders. They have, I mean, they have Don't Look Up. They have Tick, Tick, Boom. They have so many things that they can push. I mean, they have the power of the dog. They, they have a lot. It's just a matter of how much they decide to focus on the hand of God. I think that they should just based on the trailer, but we'll have to see how these reactions look coming out of Venice. If they're good, I think that Netflix throws a lot behind this and this could very easily get into Best Picture, but we'll just have to see. Uh, number 13, I have Spencer. This is another thing that we got a trailer for. Kristen Stewart is my current pick to win this year's Best Actress Oscar. Um, she looks absolutely incredible as Princess Diana. I think that this movie... So this is interesting because we have this coming from the director of Jackie, Pablo Lorraine. And Jackie just got the Best Actress nomination for Natalie Portman, Best Costumes, and the Best Original Score. Uh, this is a Johnny Greenwood score. He's also doing The Power of the Dog. I think that this movie gets a lot of tech stuff. I I really, really do. Um, I think costumes are a lock. I think that production design is a lock. I think that makeup and hair is a lock. I think that Kristen Stewart for Best Actress is a lock. I think that original score, I'll go to, as far as to say it's a lock. I, I mean... This movie has so much going for it. The cinematography looks gorgeous. Do I think that it gets in? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe the cinematography gets in. But it looks really, really good, and I think it has a really good shot to get in. Um, it can get all those technical stuff, though. What it needs, though, is it needs something like cinematography and editing. The editing has the potential to be very good in this film. It looks like a very quick, like anxiety-inducing, bumbling-over type film, which is what the Academy likes. This has the potential to get an editing nomination. Um, and just being like a very tense film. But, I mean, if Kristen Stewart is as much of a powerhouse as we think she is, and this movie can sneak into adapted screenplay, I do think that this movie will probably get in the best picture. But again, I, I'm i hesitant on some of these films that we're about to see at Venice. I, I'm nervous about them. <laughs> Because I have stuff on here that isn't premiering until like the end of the year stuff that isn't going to festivals up higher. Just because I'm a little nervous about the stuff that isn't coming from directors who have had Best Picture nominees and winners before. Um, but my number 12 is In the Heights. Should it be this high? No. No, this In the Heights should not be this high. Um, likely In the Heights. I could quite honestly see In the Heights only coming away with original song. I love this movie so much that I want it to be, uh, to get a shot at Best Picture. 
I really want it to have a shot at Best Picture. I think that it definitely gets an original song nomination. I think that Olga Meredith is so deserving of Best Supporting Actress. I, like, she should get in. She should. Will she? I don't know. On on Gold Derby, she's been very consistently fall, uh, falling on the Benny Nods. I think she's down to number nine now after being in, like, two or three. The momentum is fading on this film. And like I mentioned with King Richard, this is this could fall victim to the Dune effect, where Dune is just so amazing that Warner Brothers just decides to forget about all of their stuff and just focus on Dune. This could this could happen for In the Heights because In the Heights, like I think In the Heights deserves a sound nomination. I think it deserves a costume nomination. It deserves a production design nomination. It deserves a lot. I just don't know if it's going to get it. Um, but I'm, I'm remaining very optimistic about the In the Heights just because I want to try and will it into existence. Uh, number 11, uh, the last of the bubble films, we have Mass. This movie made people freak out at Sundance. People absolutely loved this thing. They loved it. I mean, I, I Anne Dowd is supposed to win Best Supporting Actress. That's that's what Gold Derby is saying. This It's what is supposed to happen i mean all four cast members in this are supposed to be acting players martha plimpton and dowd jason isaacs reed bernie those four are all supposed to have shots uh with ann dowd being the strongest in supporting actress this movie, even if it gets all four acting nominations, it still is going to need something else. It's still going to need either screenplay or editing or uh, cinematography or director. I don't think that this can get in just off of its ensemble cast alone. But with the position it's in where it could potentially get nominations in all four acting categories, if it gets just one of those other things, cinematography, directing, editing, screenplay, if it can get just one of those, I think that it can get in. Um, which means that this movie's path is very much there. And the trailer looked phenomenal. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, the trailer just dropped today. Looked phenomenal. Uh, so really, really excited uh, to see this film. Um, and I, I do think it could get in. Uh, but into my 10 best picture predictions, my at the moment predicted nominees Number 10, we go into another Sundance film, which is Coda. Um, I love this movie. I think that this movie is fantastic. I think that Marley Maitland is in for supporting actress. I don't know if she wins. I think that Anne Dowd is a bit stronger right now for the aforementioned mass, but Marley Maitland is right there. Troy Kotzer, I think, could sneak into supporting actor. I really think that he could. Um, I think that this movie gets in for adapted screenplay. I think that it is in as of now. The problem is tech stuff with this. Yeah, it has screenplay. I don't think that this gets director. But I think that it winning uh, both the jury prize and the audience prize at Sundance, it's a crowd-pleasing film and you always see at least one maybe two of those show up in best picture and with it being a set field of 10 this year i think they're going to take advantage of that and put a film like coda in a film that's very accessible to a lot of people that will make uh the, the, it's going to make people laugh it's going to make people cry people are going to like this movie it's a very heartwarming film so even if it isn't the most technically well done I, I do think that this gets into best picture at the last at the last spot. Could something like Spencer or the Hand of God or the Humans um, very easily take the spot or Mass? Yeah, it, it could. Um, but right now the momentum seems to be in Coda's favor. Apple TV is just going to need to promote it, which they haven't so far. If Apple TV continues to just basically ignore this movie's existence i don't know it's probably going to fall out of my uh, my 10 for best picture which is unfortunate because this is a phenomenal movie 
um it just it needs to be promoted because not that many people know that it exists uh number nine i have the french dispatch wes anderson's new film um so reactions out of can this wasn't blowing people away uh like the grand budapest hotel was people weren't saying oh my god we've never seen anything like this before it's an anthology film i don't know if there's ever been an anthology film nominated but it is Wes Anderson. This movie is going to crush at technical nominations. It's going to get uh, cinematography. It's going to get editing. It's probably going to get adapted screenplay um, or original. I can't remember which it's in. Um, it's going to get costumes. It's going to get makeup and hair. It's going to get production design. Uh, it's going to get original score. Like, it's going to get basically all of the gonna basically get all of the uh below the line like tech nominations except visual effects and sound would be my guess i i think that it gets yeah cinematography editing makeup and hair production design and costumes i think it gets all five of those paired with an adapted screenplay i think that this movie will just be too strong that's six nominations right there i think it's seventh is best picture um number nine or sorry, that was number nine. Number eight is Don't Look Up. I was a bit skeptical about this film at first just because the concept seemed a bit goofy. Like, it's a very important story to tell uh, about, like, climate change. But, and, like, the, you know, listening to scientists, and it just seemed a bit off. I guess, and strange for something that the Academy would go for. But everybody, it's Adam McKay. It doesn't matter if this is a disaster comedy movie, okay? You ever heard of movies called The Big Short and Vice? They got Best Picture nominations. Got Best Director nominations. Since he started making these type of movies for the Oscars, he has never failed to get both Best Picture and Best Director. Until he does that, I'm not going to stop believing in him. Like, and look at this cast, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jennifer Lawrence, Timothy Chalamet, Meryl Streep, Chris Evans. Like, this cast, everybody. This cast, Leo DiCaprio might get in, Jennifer Lawrence might get in. I mean, yes, the runtime's two and a half hours long, but I trust Adam McKay to keep it entertaining this is going to be a, a dr comedy drama mix that he's going to nail like he always does. Um, I I have a lot of faith for this movie. Um, I like I've heard some people now that we've gotten the trailer like put this in their top three. I've seen some people predicting this for best picture. I wouldn't go that far yet, but this movie it's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's Adam McKay. It's going to be good. It's just a matter of how good right now I think it's good enough to get into Best Picture. Number seven, I have Soggy Bottom, uh, the untitled Paul Thomas Anderson film. I, I say the title and then say untitled because we don't know if that's the real title. It may be, but we don't know. It's going by Soggy Bottom for now. I haven't understood the hype for this movie. I think that it will still probably get a Best Picture nomination. I mean, you look at, like, Phantom Thread. It's, Paul Thomas Anderson is a fantastic filmmaker. I understand the want for him to get an Oscar. I I don't see him getting director this year. Um, I think that Jane Campion is the clear frontrunner for Best Director. And until somebody else can match her nobody's changing my mind uh jane campion i i think is she's 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 right there for for best director um for the power of the dog so soggy bottom paul thomas anderson's new film we don't know a lot about it we know it's about it's in the 70s and it's about high schoolers that are trying to become actors that's very academy friendly I don't know how this story works with Paul Thomas Anderson, though. Like, guys, he's Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, so I'll, I'll have to see. But the, the only reason I have it as high as I do is just the buzz around it. People want this film to be great. 
and they want this movie to get a lot of Oscars, uh, Oscar nominations, and they want PTA to get his Oscar, which I do too. I want the guy to get his Oscar. It's criminal that he has never won an Oscar. But I think that we maybe need to tamper our expectations until we at least get a trailer. Because uh, this isn't going to festivals anywhere. It's just going to be coming out. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, number six, we have Dune. This movie is the most anticipated movie of the year. There's no two ways around it. This is the movie that people are looking forward to. People want to see this movie. I mean, this is something like The French Dispatch, where it could just crush on the um, technical categories, and it could just ride those all the way to the top. Between visual effects, sound, costume design, production design, uh, makeup and hairstyling, uh, like, it's it's going to get, I mean, cinematography, editing, this could sweep the, the seven tech categories. The problem is, do I think it gets anything above that? I just don't see Denis Villeneuve getting the Best Director nomination. I've seen a lot of people predict that. I just don't see that happening. I, I, I'm I sorry, but I don't. I think that this movie has a shot at adapted screenplay, but I think people are overestimating it. I still think that this movie definitely gets in, just coasting off of all of its tech nominations alone. But I don't think that this is as big of a player as people think it is to win Best Picture just because I don't know if it gets anything above the line. I, I really don't. I currently am not predicting it for anything above the line. I I just, I don't see it in the cards for Dune. But we'll have to see. We're going to be getting reactions within the week. Uh, now on to number five, I have West Side Story. It's Steven Spielberg remaking a movie that got all of the Oscars, including Best Picture. It is a classic film. People love it. I don't see this as the thing where he, like, messes it up. One, he's Steven Spielberg. Two, it's going to be pretty hard to mess up. Three, I think that he improves upon it, which is hard to, for me to say because West Side Story is one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, even with its problems. I, I, I try to just enjoy the movie, but I do recognize it's its problems it, it has some issues <laughs> um but steven spielberg like it, it's steven spielberg like this is getting costumes this is again like you'll be seeing a trend with a lot of these best picture nominees it's a lot of tech nominations this is getting costumes this is probably going to get original score my would be my guess i i'm guessing that there will be an original score for this film um probably gets production design like, just look at what the previous West Side Story got, and I could just see it copy and paste over, except for maybe a Best Picture win. I still think it absolutely gets nominated. At this point, it even goes far to say it's a lock to get nominated. This is, I would say, behind Dune, one of the most anticipated of the year, uh, as it was um, pushed back from last year. This is happening, guys. West Side Story is getting nominated for Best Picture. It's... It's happening. Um, number four, House of Gucci. I said that there would be another Ridley Scott film. I place House of Gucci right here. Um, hey, guys, guess what? This movie's getting tech nominations. It's getting makeup and hair. It's getting costume design. It's getting production design. Uh, it's probably... I could see this absolutely getting score. I could see this having like a sick original song that could get nominated. The big thing here is the acting categories. I think that Adam Driver gets in. I think that Lady Gaga gets in. I'd even go out on the limb. I'd go out on a limb and say that Jared Leto gets in. I think that we see lots of nominations. Al Pacino, do I think Pacino gets in for this? Maybe. I think that he's right on the bubble. But this movie is going to be getting acting nominations. I think Ridley Scott gets director. I think this gets a screenplay nomination. I think it probably gets editing. I think it gets, as I mentioned, costumes, makeup, and hair, production design. This is going to be nominated all over the place. The thing is, is this going to be something that the Academy would be willing to say this is the best picture of the year? I don't know. I don't think that the trailer, the trailer was amazing. 
I don't think that it is as Academy friendly as I think I thought it was going to be. Um, but I think it's undeniably going to be getting nominations across the board and wins across the board. That's definitely going to propel it to get uh, nominated. And I do think it has a good shot of picture. My number three here is The Power of the Dog. Uh, like I said, Jane Campion, I, I think that she's absolutely in for Best Director. Benedict Cumberbatch, he, like I said, I think that he's one of the front runners for Best Actor. He's one of the top two. I think that Kirsten Dunst has a shot to get in, a very good chance to get in, especially if they put her in Supporting Actress. Best Actress might be a bit tough this year to get into, but if she goes into Supporting Actress, again, I, I think that she is getting in. With tech stuff, I think that gets cinematography, editing, and sound. What that says is this movie is getting Best Picture between director... Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah, this movie is getting adapted screenplay. That's just going to happen. It, it has the complete package of director, screenplay, cinematography, editing. The problem is, is I don't think this is going to be as widely nominated as other films. Like, I mean, I have this in my top three. I, I, I think that has a great shot to get Best Picture. I just, there's these, these top two, I just think, have, they're just looking a bit stronger to me right now. And it honestly just comes down to that with these. I mean, I, I think that these movies are all worthy of best picture. Obviously, I haven't seen them. But from what we know so far, these are the movies that look like they're going to be getting best picture. It's just a matter of, uh, of where. Where uh, they will get wins that can propel them to the best picture win. Number two, I have The Tragedy of Macbeth. This is going to be a bit controversial. I don't think a lot of people will have this as high as I have this. Because, I mean, there was rumors that this was turned away uh, from Venice, I think. Is that entirely true? I don't know. I don't think that... That, that doesn't sound true. <laughs> um... It doesn't. It doesn't sound entirely true. Because like, Joel, like, he's Cohen is getting director. This movie is going to get screenplay. This movie is going to get best actress and best actor for Frances McDormand, and Denzel Washington. I think that they both have a great chance to win. Yes, I know Frances McDormand would be winning her third Oscar in five years, her second in a row, her fourth Oscar overall. I'm aware of that. I still think that she has a great chance to win. <laughs> um, Denzel Washington, like, adapt, like I said, adapted screenplay director. This movie is in black and white. You know, that means it's going to get cinematography. This movie's going to get costumes. It's going to get production design because it's a Shakespeare adaptation. It's also A24 paired with Apple TV. They're going to campaign so hard on this one. They're going to be able to campaign so hard. This movie has all of the right elements. Its nominations are spread out. It's something that, yes, it might be a bit more art housey to where general audiences might not like it as much, but this is something that looks like it's built for the Academy. I could see this being the mank of the year. By that, I mean, I mean, it's easy to compare. It's a black and white film. I think that this movie is going to get a crap ton of nominations. It's going to be divisive. I, I think that general audiences aren't going to like it as much. Critics are going to be mixed. But people won't be able to deny that it's technically great and that performances are great. I think that this does have a great shot to pull off Best Picture, though. I'm I'm a Mank defender. I love Mank. Uh, so maybe I'm a bit biased because I, I think that this movie will be similar to Mank. Um, because I think that, Mank, I mean, I think that, I don't think it should have won Best Picture, but I think that it should have been much closer than people were giving it credit for. So, The Tragedy of Macbeth, I do think, is very, very high up there, but I don't think that it is getting Best Picture. What I do think is getting Best Picture? Nightmare Alley. This movie. It's Guillermo del Toro, his first movie since, guys, guess what? He won Best Picture for The Shape of Water. He, 
like I he's going to direct this movie to like it, the direction is going to be phenomenal on this. I, I don't I don't know how to how to say it. The direction is going to be phenomenal. He is Jane Campion's main rival right now in my eyes for best director. It's a two horse race. I think that Jane Campion right now, I think Jane Campion gets director and Nightmare Alley gets picture. This movie's ensemble cast looks incredible. This is something like Mass, which I talked about earlier. This could get nominations in all four categories. Actor, actor, supporting actor, supporting actors. It could get them all. This movie is going to get cinematography. It's going to get editing. It's going to get production design. It's going to get costume design. Like, this movie, it's going to have almost all the tech stuff. It's going to probably get all of the acting stuff. It's going to get a screenplay nom. It's going to get a director nom. It's going to get a best picture nom. I think that it wins at least half of its nominations, which means that it's basically winning at least half of the Oscars. This movie looks so technically impressive. It looks like the performances are going to be phenomenal. This has everything that a Best Picture winner needs, which is why Nightmare Alley is my current pick for Best Picture of 2021. But let me know what your predictions are. I'd love to hear them. This was a very, very long video. Uh, so if you stuck with me through all of it, thank you. Um, because this was this was long. Very, very long. Um, but I will be looking forward to, uh, to talking more Oscars over the next six months until the ceremony. Um, I can't wait to start getting into award season once we get through fall film festival season there's so much to look forward to uh, if you don't want to miss it you can subscribe it's it's there if you want to if you don't totally cool with me just throwing it out there uh, i'll have plenty of reviews soon i actually just got an advanced screening of worth that i watched right before recording this uh the new michael keaton film so i will be having a review of coming uh of coming oof been talking for too long i'll be having a review of that coming soon for you guys plus Reminiscence, uh, Sweet Girl, uh, He's All That, whatever that movie was. Um, plenty of that. You can find me on Letterboxd at Trevor Matson, Twitter at Matson The, and elsewhere on The Basement with my fantastic co-host Mark Anopic. But until I see you guys again, thank you again so much for listening. Stay safe, everybody, and goodbye.